Hi, I'm Mackenzie Atwood, and you guys have been asking and asking for this one. So now it's finally time for an episode about Garnet. So I know I'm not telling you guys anything new when I say that Garnet is a fusion of Ruby and Sapphire, but what you may not know is that creator Rebecca Sugar and former EP Ian Jones Cordy included plenty of hints in the pilot episode of Steven Universe that Garnet was actually made up of two separate gems. And both Ian and Rebecca are back on the show today to talk about those hints, Garnet's early development, and why Ruby and Sapphire are especially meaningful to them personally. Here, I'll give you guys a hint about that. Ruby and Sapphire were actually their avatars for a while. Hmm. So while you guys think that one over for a second, co-executive producer Joe Johnston and storyboard supervisor Hilary Florido are also returning, and they're going to give us some insight on writing for Garnet versus Ruby and Sapphire individually, and what Garnet really stands for in the big picture of the Steven Universe world. And Erica Luttrell, the voice of Sapphire, is also returning to the podcast to provide some details on finding Sapphire's voice and what it's like working with Rebecca in the voiceover booth. So let's start today with Rebecca Sugar and ENJQ. Thank you guys so much for coming back. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Um, so Garnet uh, is a, obviously a very important character in the show. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So how did, it, how did Garnet start out? Was, what was the inspiration? Um, I think Garnet, when we were first designing her, was a real amalgam of both of our goals. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's sort of the thing about Garnet in general is that Garnet is our relationship. Yeah. <laughs> so it's basically yeah. We kind of made we made her together. Uh-huh. And I think she she's always sort of represented to me kind of the the best part of myself that's brought out by you. Yeah. And hopefully and, and vice versa. You, <laughs> the best part of myself. I won't, yeah, you don't have to say No, that. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, the thing about Garnet is I mean, it didn't start out this way, but um so Ruby and Sapphire sort of became like a uh <laughs> it, they sort of became like our avatars in a way, yeah. uh, me and Rebecca. And also like, so we were making this show, we were making Steven Universe, we were making it together. Mm-hmm. And it was like we were we were working together every day. We were never we apart. We were never apart. 24 hours a yeah, day. Yeah, almost 24-7. Seven days seven. a week. Yeah. I remember once I was like walking down the street and I realized <laughs> I hadn't seen a thing that you didn't also see. Yeah. In as long as I could remember. It was like, almost, <laughs> yeah, it was just because we had to work, t- we were living together and we were working together and we were working on the same thing and we were both so intimately acquainted with the piece of media that we were making that like we would sort of get on this kind of like weird level where like we knew what each other were thinking and like we could like strategize things and we were like yeah, you know on a dime sort of like saying the same thing at the same well, time and this is the thing about know. garnet is you know we we had to be in charge and maintain our relationship at the yes. same time yeah and if we faltered on either of those things uh-huh. The whole it, thing, the would, whole fall thing would fall apart. <laughs> was, yeah. Right. Uh, and so that was kind of like, yeah, we felt like we were Ruby and Sapphire in those moments. And like, yeah, it was like, I don't know. It was, it was a really interesting thing because, yeah, it became this like really good metaphor for like what we were going through at the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. That's a really nice, nice way to work that into the show. <laughs> yeah, like I like, I love that. Who's the Ruby and who's the Sapphire? Is that oh, is that established? Uh, or? I'm, I'm Sapphire. Ruby. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so with Ruby and Sapphire, was that also a thing? You said that Garnet was a metaphor for your relationship, but had you decided that that Ruby and Sapphire like existed from the start as well? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, they're yeah. Like pilot. Yeah. Pilot yeah. Guns. Yeah. They were. They yeah. were all- I it's mean, always been them. It's almost they. They changed like their personalities. That they evolved. They evolved before but I mean, you they, saw them. They always existed. It was always and Garnet happen. was designed as a fusion of the two of them. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, this was this was from the beginning. Yeah. yeah, this was like very early on that that was decided. Mm-hmm. And the mystery of Ruby and Sapphire was really fun because we were even going to have it in together breakfast. Yeah, we, we were. Gonna, we were early on. They were going to split more often and we were going to have Stephen C like one of them run by yeah we were going to do a thing where oh. he went into a room and it was actually ruby's room but uh, there's still you yeah you see yeah. we seeded it there anyway you can see that her 
the door lights up red and blue. Yeah. I mean, there's there. Are, I mean, there are just so there many are everywhere. I mean, yeah. there were so many clues that it was so obvious. I we love people would get it. Yeah. I loved watching <laughs> people um, try to figure out what the silhouettes were. Yeah. In, oh, in, in fusion cuisine, because yeah. you can see them, you can see yeah. them holding on to each other, mm-hmm. so they don't. So split. they don't split. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I, I drew that. I drew that. In yeah, myself. Rebecca drew that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and people were trying to figure out what those shapes were. Mm-hmm. Uh, so fun. Yeah. And, um, but I think the other thing is that definitely relates to like what we were going through is that. So I remember, and now we're just going to talk about, I'm just going to talk about fan theories, but I remember, <laughs> I remember seeing like people having a theory that, oh, they fused because one of them was hurt and needed to be kept alive. Or if they unfused, it means they would never come back together. Yeah, people were or like, people really thought that like, there was something dark and sad about them being fused. Yeah, people were really worried that if she... W- they didn't like the fusion theory because they thought if she was a fusion, it would mean at some point she just wouldn't be a character anymore yeah. because we'd have the two. And um, no, I don't think I saw anybody figure out that they were just in love with that each other. That they were just in love with yeah. each other. It's very they simple. Just, it was so simple. But know? I think that's also... That was a side of gem fusion we hadn't yeah. really explored yet either. Although in a way we did, that's the thing, and it's very set up. Yeah. We totally set that up uh-huh. in alone together. Yep. Because that's the kind of fusion that that's makes Garnet. The fusion that makes Garnet really so happy. So happy. Um, um, this, you know, very. Yeah. And then another thing about Ruby and Sapphire that is like. What's your face? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just, I just, talk, I'm just thinking about um, them as okay. So what? I've always thought of them as two cute little cartoon characters who are in love, mm-hmm. like the comic strip Love Is, yeah, like or or uh, like two like Harvey Comics characters that mm-hmm. are like. In a little like angel and devil with or like one that's fire and one that's ice. It's just so <laughs> cute and classic. It's like they could be like um you know like you know like a Mickey and Minnie or like they were designed to be like very kind of like classic well, and you know toony. I mean that's what that was my real goal with them. Yeah, was to because when you there's this cartoon idea in cartoons like when you see like a, a Mickey and Minnie or when you see like basically. A, uh, a cartoon couple. Yeah. It often looks a certain way where it's like, here's two characters that are like completely identical. But one except of them has one, a of them bow. Has, one of them has eyelashes and a bow. Yeah. yeah. Like Pac-Man <laughs> and Miss Pac-Man. Yeah. And, it's, and yeah. I was like, I, I wanted them to be a total challenge to that, where it's like, you look at these yeah. characters and they are completely different in every way and fit together yeah. perfectly. Like, that's why they look like the perfect couple. It's like, it's just like, it's really cute. It's just like, oh, a little... Fire and ice, like demon and angel, They're like not, being together. Ruby's not a demon. Not a demon. <laughs> I don't want to call Ruby a demon. She's not a demon. And Sapphire's not an angel either. I'm saying they switch those things, you know. Yeah, they. they... But like they're they're very they I don't know they're they're like they're cute together because they fit together in this very like classic cartoon sensibility sort of way. And that's mm-hmm. that's the thing that was always really fun to me about them was like just how how kind of silly that is you know right and it's, I remember, very, it's very cute and i remember <laughs> like yeah i remember finally getting to do that stuff at keystone hotel and it was just like oh, you know the fire motel. Oh, keystone, <laughs> keystone motel like that was the last episode we finished together. that's true it, was. And it, it felt yeah. really it felt yeah. really nice to it was uh, cathartic to end yeah. it on a ruby and sapphire mm-hmm. so, even though that is a very tumultuous ruby and i mean but it's true you know what i mean <laughs> like about like you know two people and how like i don't know being together is really difficult sometimes mm-hmm. especially when you know you're like you want to relate to each other and you spend a lot of time together and you know you have disagreements and you know yeah you care but it's hard to explain that to someone else who thinks differently it's been exciting to me to sort of show the way that they uh like the way that they fight oh gosh maybe i shouldn't go <laughs> <laughs> they, don't get, they don't get mad no. at each other yeah it's always external force it's okay, like external know. things we don't yeah. have to go too deep <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> so we, we okay. We, we talked about Ruby and Sapphire, but we we haven't really talked that much yes, about Garnet. About Garnet. Too, yeah. yeah. So let's mm-hmm. get back into Garnet. Yeah. So what, what's you know what's the deal with Garnet? <laughs> 
So She's- yeah, so Garnet basically, because of the way she is, she kind of represents, it's different than say, like for instance, Opal is like, oh, these characters are only supposed to be together for like a little bit. And so they can't really maintain this form. Garnet is a little different. It's like a little more balanced of a relationship. Yeah. So hey, she, Garnet, Garnet is her own person. She ends mm-hmm. up being her own person, yeah. And she's like, she has a lot of responsibility, and that you know, it's hard for her. It like it's a constant struggle for Garnet. I think. I think it's yeah. It's a little easier to think of her kind of as their child than yeah. Uh, if like if you had to, if put you it had in some to put it in some way, terms, yeah. and she's got attributes of of both of them, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but. She's also completely, completely different than yeah, both of them. She is different than both um, of them. But I think the thing about Garnet is that she kind of needs, she kind of needs to have her head around the situation, or or feel like she does, like like when her confidence gets shaky, mm-hmm. like her, like and and all the gems are like this, like they all kind of struggle with this sense of self, but it's like different for Garnet. Like right. when she's got it, she's got it stronger than anybody. Mm. Um, I also think that Garnet is the most likely to. Be impulsive. For instance, hmm. Pearl and Amethyst, you can kind of tell what they're going to do and going to say. Like, Pearl it, is sort of, you know, she's persnickety. Amethyst is always going to be, like, sort of laid back. But Garnet, you have no idea what she's going to do. She's maybe the more impulsive one. <laughs> like, for instance, Steven in the Sword Fighter, when Amethyst is like, I'm going to do this thing. And Garnet's just like, okay. You know? Yeah. <laughs> she just, like, is like fine if you want to dig your own hole you know she's just very i think she's most likely to be a mystery and that kind of relates back to her powers because she can sort of see she's a really complex inner world going exactly um yeah and so so sometimes the thing that she blurts out is like very surprising or weird you wouldn't expect her to say it i think that's the thing about garnet is that Sapphire can see the future, but she can only see one future. And yeah. it's a future where she is completely passive. Mm-hmm. Um, if she does nothing, this is definitely what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ruby is so impulsive yeah. that she can do something so sudden and unexpected that it alters mm-hmm. that path. At least it does when it ends up affecting Sapphire. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Garnet, and the way that her future vision works, and also I think the way that her thought process works, she she can see all these different options of what could happen if she interferes. Yeah. Right. So, because she has both of their attributes. Yeah. Uh, I think because of that, she's always very inside her own head because she's thinking about, you know, all of these, all of the consequences for all the things she could do. All the things do. she could do, all the things she could say, mm-hmm. all the things, all like the choices she could make as a leader. You yeah. Know. It yeah. gives her, I think, a kind of clarity that obviously that the other gems don't have Mm -hmm. but i think it's also very overwhelming for her and sometimes she just wants to let off steam which Mm -hmm. is why she'll sort of do these do these really unexpected things and but then i think also it takes up a a lot of her like i think she's so often thinking of what she's going to do that she's not very present in the moment all the time that's Mm -hmm. true Um, and she comes off really stoic but she can also be i think she's there when she's warm like she can experience love in real time. That's the thing. That's what yeah. she is. That's who yeah. she is. That's who she is. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to logic in the present, that makes sense in that moment. She's usually two or three steps ahead. So what she does might not make sense mm-hmm. <laughs> until until a little bit later. Mm-hmm. And she's not particularly interested in following any rules because yeah. she knows what's going to come of it. She knows it's going to come. That's why she doesn't ask questions. Mm-hmm. Actually, yes. that's the biggest thing about Garnet. Yeah, Garnet yeah. never ever asks questions in her current that was, state. That was, um, when did we come up with that? Oh, well, it was because... the oldest rules. I think it was because, I think we read something about how, like, on TV, it's like, there's always, like, these characters who, all they're there for is to ask questions, like, to be, like, the naive, like, rookie character. And we were like, what if we did the exact opposite of that and had a character who was always certain and didn't yeah, ask questions. She literally never and we we yeah. talk about this a lot. The answer is yeah. the episode where she learns to never ask questions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And from and from that point on, she never asks questions. And if you ever in any piece of Steven Universe media yeah. see Garnet in ask a question form, in ask her a question. It's not canon. It's not canon. <laughs> or somehow decide that she was asking a rhetorical question and it didn't count. Whatever. It's not no real. Rhetoric, it no rhetorical. No rhetorical right, questions. Yeah. Like Kat rakes me over the coals because I I let through um uh can't you see that my relationship is stable? Yeah, yeah. Which is 
it in her mind a, a question, but she, I think she's saying it as a statement. She's saying yeah. it as a statement. It's, you're right. It's rhetorical. Yeah. Anyway, That's what I'm saying. I messed up. I take full responsibility. Right. <laughs> um, Garnet never asks questions, and there are a lot of references to this, and that's what the answer is all about. And yeah. when you see her young, and I think you feel it even if people don't pick up on it, because when she first exists, all she does is ask all questions. All she does yeah. is ask questions. Yeah. Um, and it's very unusual to see her in that yep. in that way. There's a joke about it in Know Your Fusion that really stuck out to me, where she's yes. like, they're like, maybe we should ask them what's going on. She's like, I, I can't. can't. She's yeah. like paralyzed. Yeah. <laughs> she can't ask questions. Yeah. My she, favorite. Just doesn't, she just doesn't want what? want to yeah. right right so it's not that she physically cannot it's just that yeah it's just not it's her it's just not yeah yeah she's it's, it's just a, not it's in also, her nature to do it's also a pact yeah that she made with rose mm-hmm. right which we will go into yeah. very yeah soon oh <laughs> um yeah more about there's, that there's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay exactly. tuned. Um, so you guys talk about how she she can maintain this sort of stoicism and like how you can always really tell like you know like it's like it reminds me at the start of the answer, especially the visor when she takes off the visor you know she's there mm-hmm. um, and like very present. Is there like a turning point you think for her to between when she starts doing that? Is it because like Stephen sees her as a fusion? Is it due to Stephen? Is that the reason that she starts sort of letting her guard down more? I mean, I think up until Stephen knew that about her, it was something she was guarding from him. And mm-hmm. I think that that weighed on her a lot. Yeah. Um, she's so much happier now. And didn't, didn't, <laughs> uh, didn't Lamar write in also just that Garnet has tried to show Stephen this in the past and it upset him? Like yes, when he was a yes, baby. Yes, this is the thing. Mm. In Three Gems, mm-hmm. um, which is my shorthand for Three yeah, Gems three and, gems a, baby. and yes. a Baby. Yeah. In Three Gems, uh, she. She shows him. She does show him, yeah. and he gets upset. He gets upset, and that was really, I think, mm-hmm. really scary for her. Well, I think mm-hmm. that uh, it had. I mean, it had the weight Garnet, not only of this baby, but of. I mean, my her whole history. You know, my thought behind that was that she saw two possible futures of ways that this could go. Of like, I'm going to share this with him, and if he smiles, then we're going to have that kind of relationship. And then she did it, and he cried, and he was, and she, it completely changed things for her. Mm-hmm. And so she realized, oh, I have to kind of keep myself a little more hidden, mm-hmm. you know. And it wasn't until Stephen became a little more mature that she could change, mm-hmm. you know. I think it, it's also like Stephen doesn't actually begin to understand fusion until like Giant Woman. Yeah, you know, yeah. he's getting all the information well at the same speed that the audience is. Yeah. You know, that was really zero to 60. Mm-hmm. And, he, and I don't think she really, none of them really understood that as a baby, he couldn't <laughs> fully understand things <laughs> right. yeah. um, or really what the, what he, he was as a baby at all. I always took it that, that, that actually really hurt Garnet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, hurt um, her, it hurt her a lot. Yeah. And I think there even used to be lines where she decided, does she still say that she did it too soon? She no, used to say she used it. To, she used to be really hurt, but I feel like we that might have gotten it might have got, yeah, uh, it, it, it was time. maybe a little too um, sad. <laughs> yeah, but I think you know she she worries about it, and I think even as the thing is, Stephen is learning about fusion, but he doesn't understand a lot of the weight that it has for the gems mm-hmm. at all. So even by the time he finds out, and he's just excited about it, I think, and that's a big deal right. for Garnet to see that he's happy to find this out yeah. because she, I think she didn't know that he would be happy and why wouldn't he be but she's got the bur- yeah. the weight of all of the negative associations that gems have with fusion and on we've her shoulders sh- and we've shown it a little bit but Garnet Garnet kind of sees the world differently I think than than everybody else um so uh, uh, we talked about this a little before in a, in the episode about fu- about fusion we talked about how Stevani sort of sees uh, the world, and we sort of see a little bit of like the hallucinations and the and the sort of psychedelic imagery. And Garnet, it's kind of similar, and we see that in Future Vision that the way Garnet sort of looks at the world is like almost like these splitting paths and these and these ever arching timelines. Mm-hmm. And from her POV, that's kind of how the world looks. And that's incredibly, like, overwhelming, mm-hmm. which is why, you know, and this goes back to early canon, say in the episode, like, Arcade Mania, that's why, like, that Meat Beat Mania was so soothing, because she had this thing that was, like, this predictable uh, future that was happening in this game mm. that she could that she could predict. And it was, like, she could get locked into something like that. I think um, it, with the gems, it's sort of, like, they're all... 
sort of socially awkward in these different ways. Yeah. Uh, I think the thing that makes Garnet really different, you know, Amethyst is, can be like self-destructive and a little abrasive, um, and Pearl uh, can be sort of like uh, a little unaware of how other people are feeling. Yeah. But Garnet is hyper aware. She's like the yeah. kind of person who is so busy predicting how you might react to anything she says yeah. that she says nothing. You know, I mean? like, like, and I feel like mm-hmm. that's something. Mm-hmm. It's like they're all nerdy, but that's the kind of nerdy yeah. that Garnet is. And Garnet is it's almost like it, you can imagine it being like a little paralyzing. Like you can kind of hear everything that's being said in the room. You can sort of see every action that's being done. You can mm-hmm. see all of the reactions that are happening. Uh it's it's like the way that she is, the stoicness and then the way that she will blurt out something that's surprising is because she's like mired in this like you know extrasensory perception and but the thing that cuts through that is when she trusts someone when she loves someone you know she's able to be more flexible and you know if if she can as much as that might be paralyzing when she's like and that's why i think her way feels right even though it's these seem like two really different, yeah. it seems like she should be very cold. When you really get to understand her better, those things make a lot of sense because she is extremely warm. And when she trusts someone, she really trusts someone yeah. enough that it can cut through all of the potential ways something can go wrong. Where she just mm-hmm. really believes in someone that they'll help her take. Because I think she can right. see like a, a mass convergence of timelines where this the relationship with this person is a good one. You know, yeah, and, but you have to be- you have to believe you have, you have to, to believe. believe in someone because yeah. you can see how things can go you wrong. You can see mm-hmm. how things can go, and wrong. that happens. We have the episode where she believes in a future where Stephen <laughs> yeah. doesn't go on the roof. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> she yeah. decides to believe in one where he's going to be mature, and then he's and not. Then he's not, and that's really and that's very upsetting, scary yeah. to her. Yeah, because it's shaking her belief. Yeah. She'd rather have it shake her belief in herself than her belief in him, and that's yeah. what that interaction is. Really quick, my favorite Garnet line is from Marvel Madness. Uh, we can't fight these things forever. Well, we can, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a good one. That was one of my favorites because it's funny. It's a funny joke, but then when you actually understand Garnet, it becomes even funnier because yes. she's saying... She sees a future where they fight we them. Li- <laughs> we, we could literally... This could be the rest of the series of fighting these droids <laughs> yes. forever and ever and ever. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, let's not do it. Yeah. yeah. And I think she, up until that point, she was content with that, which is really weird when you think about it. Oh, just fighting them. Yeah, like, just fighting yeah, them. This That's, is our life now. Yeah. She, she gets about three deep. And yeah, she realizes she's like, oh, that forget it. Like, yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, guys, thank you so much for coming and talking to me. Yeah. yeah. So now that we know what inspired Garnet and the two gems that create her, let's find out what it's like to write for her and Ruby and Sapphire with co-executive producer Joe Johnston and storyboard supervisor Hillary Florida. executive producer joe johnston and storyboard supervisor hillary florido and uh thank you guys for coming back and talking to me again thank you um yeah this is first time doing a podcast this is really exciting (laughs) (laughs) wow (laughs) congrats i'm just messing Uh, with the timeline now (laughs) yeah the um so today we're talking about garnet so how do you guys approach writing for her character like her as opposed to like ruby and sapphire just talk about garnet for now well, as we were discussing pre-podcast, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually have a lot of episodes with Garnet as the focus. I mean, it's not like I I am purposely deprived uh, <laughs> of Garnet episodes, but I certainly thrive in the chatty, self-deprecation line of dialogue. And Garnet mm. is competent. And badass and, you know, not those things. Yeah, she's, she's uh, soft-spoken, and, but she says what she means. She says what she, mm-hmm. she wants. She's, she's cool, she's collected, she's controlled, but she's also uh, impulsive in, in a direct sort of way where she, she'll dive into a situation sort of head first after she's analyzed it and thought about it. Um, <laughs> the multiple futures of whatever it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I guess like the the biggest challenge for writing her has always been her no questions yeah. rule. Yeah. 
I was actually really surprised when we just casually revealed that. What do you mean ca- Wait, it, wait, what do you mean casual? It was an episode that I did. Cause, yes. Cause I re- yes. <laughs> I do That's remember right. that much. Because I remember being like, really, this is how we're going to do it? All these times, like, we have struggled with lines of dialogue. <laughs> Wait, that's log date, isn't it? It's Know Your Fusion. Or is it, uh, oh, is the, it Know Your Fusion? Oh, right. Because it, it's Thank when you. they're, like, talking. Because that, that's the really, like, meta episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're right, talking. And, and Pearl's like, why don't you ask them what they're trying to rehearse that's for? Right, and, that's right. That's and right. And Garnet's like, I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not possible. Yeah. I love that, though. It's, Maybe it's we really... should have said more directly, I don't ask questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That would have um, been really funny. That's that was that was a. I mean, that's been a rule since the very very beginning. Uh, for Garnet, she doesn't ask questions, and what that actually lets us, or sort of forces us to do, when we write her is is that we write her in a way that's very direct and very definitive. Definitive, yeah, on on mm-hmm. like what she means and what she's doing. So you are just from having that rule or that limitation. Uh, it helps you write the character. Yeah, it helps us write her as this very strong leader of the group. <laughs> um, Is that reflective? I'm just thinking of all those times we've been in a pitch and be like, wait, how do we get her to say this without yes. asking a question? Yeah. And everyone has a really hard time. <laughs> yeah. I guess we're all just not definitive been, people. <laughs> we could probably, gosh, if, if we go back in time and like <laughs> add up all those minutes, it's hours, hours of time <laughs> of figuring out how to get her to say a line that isn't a question when right. we need her to like progress the story yeah. <laughs> in we some way a specific story point to come up and sh- she's a gem for it mm-hmm. and it's really hard yeah whatever got some backwards the past is in like the past. <laughs> <laughs> moving forward i'm just thinking about like some backwards like yoga style or uh, <laughs> some backwards like yoda style dialogue where you got to change the sentence structure and make sure there's no question mark involved whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, but it's, yeah, it's the a little bit of that. It's, yeah, it's a little bit of just m- making sure it works as a statement rather than mm-hmm, mm-hmm, a question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about when you guys have to write Ruby and Sapphire? Uh, again, I don't actually write them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Ruby and Sapphire, it's 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 the breaking down of Garnet. So like the cool and collected, controlled aspects of Garnet. That's Sapphire, and then the impulsive and direct parts of Garnet. That's that's Ruby. Um. <laughs> I mean, a fusion is always the sum and also an addition of the parts that it's made of. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you were both those gems, but you're also your own gem. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, that was probably the trickiest thing was that Garnet was this established character um, before we started writing Ruby and Sapphire um, because we held off on that reveal for so long. Um, so when it came time to write for Ruby and Sapphire, it, it, t- it took a moment, it took a pause to go like, okay, so what are the, who are these characters that make this mm-hmm. amazing superhero? And so that, that was a fun time on, on Jailbreak and uh, Kiso Motel to sort of put these two together. And it's a little like how Amethyst and Pearl function as Opal. Opal is, you know, this very, it, it's this amazing superhero um, because you, you take... Pearl and Amethyst, who are almost like sort of direct opposites of each other, and you put them mm. together, they'll make one perfect being, in a sense. And it's kind of the same with Garnet and Ruby and Sapphire. It's all about balance, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Fire and ice. Yes, I love that too. I love that. <laughs> it sounds that, like that's way less cool when you say it like that. What? Really? <laughs> I of. thought it sounded a little cool. I don't know, that's like a school dance name. <laughs> school dance name. <laughs> like, that, you're not wrong. But, but Garnet, Garnet is like kind of embarrassing in that sense too. When she's, being, she's so real. The yeah. Way, like, yeah. When the realness you know, of a really upsetting. Yeah. When, when she dances. gets when she gets happy, there's almost a goofy aspect to her. It's yeah. true. It's true. Um, which it is, is it's, she, she becomes. She is the coolest mom, but she has the most potential for being the most embarrassing mom. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. she's just really okay. into it. I like that. Yeah. Right. When, she also just doesn't get how to talk to people, which is great. Like, like on like the phone. A, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, I'm, <laughs> like, imagine if your your parent like wanted to talk to you in the most intimate detail about your relationship with right. another person. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Garnet like dives like straight into that. I'm take a hard pass. Yeah. No hesitation. <laughs> yeah. 
I love it when she does interact with humans just because she's she's doing her very best, but she needs some help sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's great seeing other people's perceptions of Garnet too, because like she's such a important character to the gem to the crystal gems. I think you know. So like when I you boarded Garnet's universe, right, Joe? Yeah, that was me and Jeff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that was a really fun episode because you know first of all it's just like a really weird compared to the other episodes of the show. <laughs> you know, it's just like a it's just very different, and it also shows Stephen's like how Stephen viewed Garnet. What was it like when you guys like? had to had to sit down and do that that was a blast because we got to make a different show for <laughs> yeah. not that like, we don't enjoy making steven but it's um it's also fun to do a sh- like because we're locked in steven's pov um it's fun to sort of jump outside of that and do a different view it is his view mm-hmm. it's it's his imagination it's it's what he he wants for garnet and it's all kind of maybe what we secretly want for Garnet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, she goes off and does missions by herself sometimes, and it's fun to imagine like what she's actually doing um, right. when she goes off on those missions. Um, but yeah, we had a we had a lot of fun doing that. It did feel like there was a lot of like breaking all the rules. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun seeing Didi and Michaela too because they played those other yes. characters. And it was yeah. fun. It was really fun to swap <laughs> them. Um, yeah, I mean, Didi's always really great at being like sort of manic but uh it was fun to make amethyst or to make a uh, michaela the cool one uh she <laughs> yeah played a, she played a was it was that hopper i don't remember, I don't remember their, which one, which is, one which. is which i think hopper's there's the bunny and the yeah i think hoppy is the frog and hopper is the rabbit yeah oh, wait maybe. who played who <laughs> and michaela played the bunny hopper and Dee Dee played hoppy Sure, whatever you say. I'm, I am. I am. There is a 50, 50 chance I am a hundred percent wrong on that statement. <laughs> this um, is the time when we need the wiki. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah, know that. Yeah. <laughs> I believe you right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really fun episode, regardless. But um, on the other side of the coin, you know, there's like more heavy episodes, like um, the whole Sardonyx arc with Pearl and Garnet, and that whole fallout and cry for help and friendship. What was it like tackling that with her character? I mean, I certainly I remember uh, Cry for Hell being pitched, and how was it done? Very carefully. Yes. There was yes. a lot of discussion. You certainly can't control people's interpretations, but we wanted to make it. I remember us in the room talking about how to make this okay and how yeah. to make it work and honor all the characters. It was a very unique opportunity, and fusion as a concept presents all these opportunities because it's a visual allegory for relationships. Of, so of any kind. Of any kind, yes. It's just um, it's an intimate exchange yeah, of and, feelings. Yeah, and the friendship arc was all about consent and dealing with that subject in a way that was first of all not too heavy. But we but, are a children's show, yeah, and a comedy, but, yeah, yeah. But but <laughs> yeah, being, being able to present it in a way um, that is uh, relatable or understandable, just in within the show, like because yeah. because I, I remember because sometimes we'll we'll watch the episodes sort of live streaming on the internet while we'll, while we're watching everyone's comments on them, um, <laughs> and we can see people's reactions to things sometimes and. Like on that episode, we 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 saw like the reaction. Everyone understood um, at the end of that episode why Garnet was so upset with Pearl, mm-hmm. and that was that was a big like hurrah moment for us. Uh, just being able to pull that off because it's it's a very inside the show, like the concept of fusion, mm-hmm. um, and so being able to really sort of land that moment where they get into that big fight and really have that 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 gut punch uh, feeling in it was a big uh, mm-hmm. and even, success for us. And the fact that it's like, you know, fusion is very in show, but you're connecting a theme that resonates with people in yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah. In very different ways. So how, yeah, how to represent it both authentically as a person and then also in the show. Mm-hmm. And then, and then show, showing how to deal with that, yeah. with that break. And that was also, I mean, that was one of the biggest, the biggest things that I was really into for that arc was actually to sort of have a real break in the team 
mm -hmm. um, which we had never really we hadn't done up until then, like a right. real yeah. like, core break in the team, like, oh, shoot, something is broken and we all have to like yeah. work together to fix it or we have to get these two to talk so that they can fix it. <laughs> yeah, this is not a a slip up. This is a big mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how crazy. do crazy. And I remember definitely talking to her about how do you come to peace with that and not sweep under the fat a sweep under the rug that like it was a mistake mm -hmm. and that mistake exists yeah. and it's not going to go away mm -hmm. um and that you have to both hold that and a resolution and move forward yeah and and how the, that and, works yeah and the only way to resolve it is to confront it and to talk about it and talk about it openly and and showing that that's that's what you've got to do even though even though they're trapped in a collapsing room that's going to squish them but I yeah they got it <laughs> easier to talk yeah 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 because yeah. generally like you know if you actually have to talk about a problem you have to find the person and like make them stay yeah. but if you're in a slowly collapsing room super easy mm -hmm. feelings Han Solo <laughs> and Princess Leia and Luke Skywalker became best friends in that garbage pit yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's how it works. I, uh, Stephen and Amethyst set the whole thing up they were like Oh no, you're in a shrinking room. Yeah, they what scouted ahead. Do? They, they okay, found a right. ship and they, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like they when they. to go there. <laughs> All I can, can think of is like, it's like any, like usually, well, it's happened to me. Like your parent traps you in the car because they want to talk to you about something. <gasps> so we're driving. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to leave from this car. <laughs> Let me. Never stop Garnet. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Jumping out a like, moving vehicle. Trapped in a small space conversation. That was, <laughs> yes, that was the yes, end of the joke. joke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to me again. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. And speaking of Ruby and Sapphire, Erica Luttrell, who voices Sapphire, is coming on to tell us how she got the part and why she loves being part of a fusion. I am here with Erica Luttrell, who is the voice of Sapphire and uh, on Steven Universe. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so let's jump into it. Uh, the part of Sapphire, what was the process like for you letting that role? It's funny. It was a, it's an interesting process because I originally auditioned for Garnet. Oh. Like, it, I don't even know what it was, like a year before that, and I'd forgotten that it had happened, and, you know, so that was the beginning of the show, so I didn't even know what the show was mm -hmm. when I auditioned for that. I had the breakdown. I was like, oh, that's a cool character. Great. But I'd let it go at that point, and, you know, and then I just got called in to do Sapphire. Sometimes that happens, and mm -hmm. it's always a joy because then you don't actually have to audition. And oh, great! And I'm like, well, what is the part, and what is the thing? And I thought it was just a guest role. I didn't realize I would be coming back over and over again. And so I read the description. It sounded really cool. And uh, Rebecca had actually apparently seen my singing YouTube videos. Oh, nice! Which I. Quite honestly, and no one ever believes me. She's like, so do you just do that professionally? Are you in musical theater? And I'm like, no. I actually feel weird performing in front of people, like, live. <laughs> That's why I do it on YouTube. Like, That's behind a way. mic yeah. is different, and, like, on camera it's different. But I've never done theater, so I had a friend oh. who said to me, you need to make, like, YouTube videos and have people say nice things about you and then, like, be convinced that you can actually sing in front of humans. Right. And so that's the only reason they exist. I've, like, made, like, four or five of them, and I'm acting like a complete dork. So <laughs> awkward. I ramble. There's, like, some weird cuts. One of them is fuzzy. Like, and apparently she's all this. She's like, oh, yeah, okay, cool, yeah. That was Seems the audition. Like a, <laughs> seems like a good option. Uh, now that you mentioned that, I actually do remember talking to her, and she said that, like, you know, that you you were, like, close to Garnet, but, like, not quite, I think, in the voice in her head, and I think that that makes sense for uh, perfectly for the part of Sapphire, which is... Right. Like, yeah. Totally. <laughs> what was your, like, un initial understanding of the part of Sapphire? Well, I thought it was... I mean, I loved what I knew about her and that mm -hmm. she was this fusion and but a love fusion and that that was unique to the right. show from what I understood at that point I understood obviously that she had this sort of icy kind of personality she could predict the future which I from my perspective would assume would would be very weighty to carry mm. around you know so so that was an interesting thing so my my impression of her was that obviously on she was a sort of royalty and in this sort of high up position and you know was so 
her her journey was interesting to me because she came to obviously fall in love with somebody who was essentially like a servant of hers for, mm-hmm. for all intents and purposes. Uh, but I would think that that would be a relief to her, you know, having had all this weight of the future and the things and the position she was in and then to meet somebody who was just themselves and, you know, And something that. that was unexpected to Yeah, exactly. Someone who can normally see, you know. Exactly. She's probably thinking like 30 years ahead and... I know. Oh, <laughs> see, that's you even giving me that. That's funny. I didn't even really think about that. Yeah, totally yeah. unexpected. It was really cute. Oh, I, that, the answer was a, a great episode, the one where they you should, I love you see their, their origin story. Yeah. Um, what, what did you think about Fusion? You said that you, you sort of grasped it, but... Yeah, I grasped it. I, I mean, I, and I in particular grasped the idea of it being a love fusion and how, how neat that was. I was mm-hmm. super jazzed that it was this character, obviously, that I auditioned for, but more to the point that people were so accustomed to and loved and, you know, this there was going to be this really sort of magical reveal about them I thought was uh, was fantastic. But, yeah, I mean, I, I grasped it, and I'd seen a couple episodes, and so I knew what that was in other contexts, and it seemed like it'd be cool. Okay, great. You can do that. You can increase your strength. You can increase your various other things. But to sort of be this – because cause, uh, the way Estelle sort of does Garnet, she's so sp- peaceful, you mm-hmm. know, and just kind of – and to me that's sort of what the, that sort of genuine love would look like. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Yeah. Um, when you're in the booth recording, is it tough to, especially like, you know, we didn't really know Sapphire as well. She was much more, like you said, sort of like cold, pun yeah. intended, but like, uh, it was like, it's, is it tough to, to portray a character in a way that's like sort of seems detached, but also having emotional delivery in your lines? It can be, yeah. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, Rebecca will pull me back. Like, it'll tilt too far to me, and I can be a complete goofball and, like, a weirdo. Right. So um, <laughs> so whatever, the, the tone of the voice will then start to skew a little bit more in that direction, depending. And it's, you know, it's like with, like, Hit the Diamond and things like that. With sort of some of those episodes, that are a little bit more fun, and there isn't as much of the relationship involved or as much of that emotionality involved. It can be easy to kind of skew more sort of fun with her and so then she'll pull me back and be like oh just a little bit more sapphire just yes. a little bit more chilled out and kind of you know she knows and so and so it's it's neat to be able to remember that or to be brought back to that you know and to not give too much essentially to the moment because she's so controlled hit the diamond was so fun right i, I think about that episode <laughs> a lot just because like they almost it's like, no, got caught by don't. the home world for just flirting. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, so much is on the line. You know, but can't. it's just, they love each other so much. I know, they can't even stop for, like, a second. It's hard not to. It's so great. They're separated. They, yeah, they have to maintain like, their connection somehow, exactly, you know. Yeah, I, I totally understand. <laughs> no, it was adorable, though. What about, you talked about the, the seeing into the future thing. Is yeah. that tough to work in in a way that feels real like you know you said it sort of felt like it put a weight on the character's shoulders right yeah i mean i is it tough to play it in a way that feels real yeah that's uh no and yes (laughs) yes and no um it i mean it isn't tough as an act i mean obviously as a human being technically we can't see the future technically i mean maybe you could say that we do we can if we have if we listen to (laughs) our intuition but what is our intuition really saying and which of the voices in our head i have many (laughs) is really speaking the truth you know and it can be hard to parse that out because you have the things that you want and then the things that maybe are more likely to transpire or you're more likely to benefit from or whatever it is you you know so i think it from that perspective it can be uh, an interesting challenge because you're having to sort of think about what it would be like to really sort of listen to yourself in that way but to not be able to have the option not to listen to yourself because mm-hmm. it's you know that that is the voice you can recognize the voice and it's speaking the truth apparently mm-hmm. yeah it seems like your sapphire voice is really different from your normal speaking voice just talking to you yeah um which is i, I can mean, go deep it's weird yeah it's, well, no, it's just different it's like it's impressive <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm very impressed uh oh, what you. is it like do you what do you do to get in character <laughs> oh goodness um well there are a lot of i don't know that i have any 
I mean, the script obviously helps, and we have the storyboards in the recording sessions. Mm-hmm. So Rebecca will actually have them up on a monitor so that we can, I don't know if anyone's told you this before, probably they have, but uh, so for each scene, so that you'll understand the tone of the scene uh, as a, yeah, and the context, because sometimes you'll have like four or five lines, and yeah, you get it, sort of, but when you see what their facial expressions are doing, what the other characters are doing in the scene, it gives you something more to play off of, which isn't always the case in um, animation because Mm -hmm. typically or video games or what have you you don't have those images to go off of and as an on-camera actor too you have another person to give you something i don't even know if i answered that question i think i went off on a tangent okay it's it's a storyboard driven (laughs) show which is different from a lot Um, yeah they the storyboards come into play very early yeah and i love that script yeah yeah it's really I think it's neat too. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, right. So, getting into character, it, it's uh, using those is is incredibly mm-hmm. helpful to to sink into it and to to know where you are in space, so to speak. Right, right, right. And who you're talking to. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming and talking to oh, me. Oh, my pleasure. My goodness, this is a blast. It went by so fast. Darn it. <laughs> and that wraps up volume two on the people and places of Steven Universe. It's been so much fun bringing all you guys these episodes. The Steven Universe podcast is produced by Charles Abadje, Stacey Perra, and Conrad Montgomery. Special thanks to Rob Sorcher, Cartoon Network Studios, The Crewniverse, and Turner Studios in Atlanta. And I also want to extend another huge thank you to Steven Universe creator Rebecca Sugar and former executive producer Ian Jones Cordy for appearing in every single episode of Volume 2 and providing such a detailed, in depth look at all the characters and places that we covered. These two are very busy people. They have shows of their own to run, so it means a lot that they were here every week talking to me about these characters. So please subscribe to the Steven Universe podcast at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts so that you don't miss out on upcoming episodes. And we'll be back in just a couple of weeks with a series of behind-the-scenes mini-recaps focusing on the brand-new animated episodes of Steven Universe that are premiering on Cartoon Network on Monday, April 9th. I'm Mackenzie Atwood. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll be back April 10th with a new podcast on Your Mother and Mine.